Hey guys, what is going on? My name's Tyler McNabb, and uh, well, I don't really have a YFZR right now. I have a bunch of pieces to a YFC450R. So in this video, the pieces we are going to be dealing with are these and those and some pieces elsewhere. So we are going to be building the engine in this video of the 2024 YFZ450R XC build series. So should be a, uh, a pretty good one here. So starting out, what we're gonna do is we gotta assemble this bottom end. So we got our cases in the last video. We got them all vapor blasted, cleaned up real nice, looking real shiny, all brand new looking, good stuff there. And so uh, what we need to do is uh, first and foremost is assemble the bottom end uh, and get these bearings installed. So that's what I'm gonna do first is go through, get these bearings installed, gonna throw the cases in the old powder coating oven over there, get them heated up to about 250 degrees. I think that's what uh, On One Wheel 7 said he does. So gonna get those warmed up there. All the bearings and the crank and that kind of stuff are already inside in the freezer. They've been in there for a little over a day at this point, so they should be good and cold. Um, but yeah, and so uh, this is all new to me, so uh, I'm just gonna go through and time lapse it. Uh, like I said, if you're looking for a real-time how-to uh, video on that, go check out On One Wheel 7's channel. Uh, he just went through and did another uh, real-time uh, series, and uh, he actually just dropped that video yesterday for me. It's probably a week ago uh, when this video gets released, but um, yeah. So uh, he does really good job uh, explaining what to do, and he's very knowledgeable on it. He's uh, done it multiple times, so uh, I trust his uh, I trust his judgment on that stuff. So um, I'm gonna basically do uh, I kind of watched went through watched his video to uh, make sure I know what to do with this since it's my first time doing the bottom end. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, get these cases in the oven and uh, start this engine build. Let's get to it.
Okay guys, well, uh, we are assembling this bottom end back together and I've run into a little bit of an issue here. So uh, let me just show you. So got the case halves assembled, everything. We just, our transmission spins freely, all that. However, the crank is having a little bit of an issue. So um, it works right here as you can see, but if I push it backwards, it stops. And so what I have found is I doubt you guys are going to be able to see this on the GoPro, but there's a little casting mark on this case right back here, and the crank is rubbing on it, which doesn't really make any sense because um, my other crank was just fine. It wasn't rubbing on anything. So uh, I did some a little bit of investigating, and I'll, I took some pictures of it, so I'll throw the pictures up here real quick, see if you guys can see the difference. But if we look on the clutch side of the engine the bearing or the clutch surface is nice and seated uh on the bearing surface so they're nice and flush together and if we switch over to the other side the flywheel side and we look at it the clutch or the crank is not quite seated fully in that bearing and so that is my guess as to what is happening is it's not quite fully seated in the cases and so it's throwing this crank off a little bit and we have some rubbing going on. So the bearing feels fine in here. I don't feel any rubbing or anything. So I think the crank may be okay for now. If anything, I think it's maybe just the cases that are bending a little bit. And so I ended up ordering a crank puller, uh, this Tusk crank puller from Rocky Mountain ATV. I was hoping I could get away with not having to use this. Um, if you watch on one wheel sevens videos, he usually doesn't have any trouble putting that back together. For some reason, mine uh, just did not want to go back together. So um, we're going to try that real quick. I'm going to put the crank puller on, try to pull that just that little bit of the rest of the way through, and hopefully that will fix our issue. Otherwise, um, all I can really think of is that I somehow jacked this crank up uh, when installing it. Um, the only good thing is my cr my old crank is still good. There's no play in it. So worst comes to worst, I could install that back in. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. So uh, we're going to try to fix it real quick. And hopefully that's the issue. And uh, we don't have any more issues from there. So let's see if it works. Okay guys, well we got the crank fully seated and let's look at the results. So we got our crank here, it moves forward just like it did. Let's move it back, oh yeah, full rotation. As you can see, it is functioning exactly how it's supposed to. It definitely loosened up a little bit when that happened. So that's all it was, the crank was just in a little bit of a bind, causing it to hit that case uh, half and uh, now we should be good to go uh, with the rest of this engine assembly. So let's get back to it.
Okay guys, so we got a good portion of this engine assembled so far. So if we look at our engine right here, we have a good portion. Uh, we've got our flywheel side uh, pretty much assembled. I think it's actually ready to go. There's a, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything left to do on this side. Uh, come over to the other side. We got our clutch side pretty much fully assembled. The only thing left we have to do is the actual clutch itself. Um, but other than that, this thing is uh, pretty much ready to go there. And the only reason I'm waiting on that uh, to put that in is because I don't have the seal uh, for the clutch arm quite yet. And you have to put that in um, before you put the clutch arm in. And you have to put the clutch arm in before you put like the uh, rod and ball that go through here uh, just to make sure that it seats properly and all that. So, uh, yeah. We pretty much have this thing fully assembled, um, not fully assembled, but we have that pretty much complete. The only thing left to do on this bottom end is the clutch and our covers, which I am going to show you right now. So these things turned out absolutely sick and um, decided to dabble in the world of Cerakote. I've never dealt with it before, and so I figured, you know what, if I'm going out on all out on this build, might as well uh, make it look pretty sick too. So picked these up from 834 powder coating over in Terre Haute and let's take a look at them. Shoo! We have some burnt bronze Cerakoted side cases. So we have our flywheel side, we have our clutch side looking absolutely beautiful and uh, these things are going to look absolutely amazing over on our fully assembled engine so uh yeah only thing left to do with these is i need to go ahead and get my new water pump uh installed i got all those parts there from bnr motorsports they got me dialed in for that and then in this cover got to go ahead and get our stator in as well so i'm gonna do that before we get those on um, the engine because I am still waiting on the covers themselves so still waiting on the clutch cover oil filter cover water pump cover and oil dipstick cover I guess you could call it um, because uh, there was a little bit of an issue with those but he got me dialed back in pretty quick so um, they're actually ready I'm just waiting uh, to head over to pick them up here in a couple days but I'll have those back in a couple days and uh, this engine should be uh, fully dialed after that so I'm gonna go ahead stick you back on the tripod do a little bit of time lapse and get that water pump in get the um, stator in and then we will get back to fully assembling this engine
Okay guys, after a long, long day, this motor is finally finished. I had some little issues here and there that were just kind of giving me trouble, but this is also my very first time totally tearing down the motor and putting it back up or putting it back together. So um, yeah, top end didn't really give me any issues. I've done quite a few top ends, so that wasn't an issue, but just some little stuff here and there trying to figure stuff out uh, on the bottom end. But I got it back together, it turns over, it's in time, it's not binding up anywhere, it shifts, all that good stuff. So, let's see it. Oh yeah. We have here my 2019 Yamaha YFZ 450R engine. Totally vapor blasted center cases, cylinder, cylinder head, and starter. Got that as well. We have our outer clutch case cerakoted in burnt bronze we have our stator cover outer stator cover cerakoted in burnt bronze then we have our clutch cover our oil filter cover our um, water pump cover and our oil dipstick cover whatever you want to call it all cerakoted in jet black and then to complement this engine, we have some brand new Raccoon Racing products from BNR Motorsports. Timing plugs up here. Match that black pretty good. Offset, uh, do a little bit of uh, color difference off that burnt bronze. Looks sweet. Of course, we have our 38 Motorsports block off plugs that I had last year. Those still looking great. And we also have our valve cover Cerakoted in burnt bronze. So this thing looks absolutely sick. It's different. Um, you don't really see a whole lot of quad engines doing this. Uh, this is a big thing in the bike world. Uh, the Cerakoted cases and stuff. You just don't see it a whole lot in the quad world it seems like. And uh, you know, I wanted to try it, be different. And since I'm trying to go uh, make a, a pretty gnarly build this year i figured i might as well do some cerakote so big thank you to matt price at 834 powder coating he hooked it up on this uh cerakote job did an amazing job and uh, these things look absolutely sick so yeah i think that is going to end out our engine build video i don't think this ended up being a super long video because um uh, yeah, I just time lapsed it, but uh, I've d like I said in the beginning of the video, you've got uh, on one wheel seven has plenty of step by step tutorials on how to uh, put these engines together. So I didn't feel like I needed to do that. So quick time lapse there, uh, throwing this engine together, and uh, overall it just looks absolutely sick. So yeah, now all that's left to do is get it in a quad and so that's going to be our next video we're going to be uh starting on the full frame up build and then uh in that video you guys will also see um what color scheme we're going with this year so uh we've got a whole new color scheme uh going compared to last year we have uh we're going full powder coat we're going different plastics we're gonna have a, a good graphics kit on it whole nine yards so uh, if you guys want to leave your guesses down in the comments as to what our color scheme is going to be that you'll see in the next video there's a couple people out there who actually do know what it's going to be already so don't you guys spoil it but uh for those that don't uh go out go down in the comments guess uh what uh that color scheme is going to be and uh yeah i'll give you a hint real quick i'll throw up a picture right here quick hint as to what the build is gonna look like. And so, uh, yeah, that's uh, a hint for you. Um, I can tell you it's not exactly like that, um, but it's uh, similar. So I will tell you, uh, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be pretty sick. So I will go ahead and end out this video here. Thank you guys for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one.